you here today. We've come to celebrate the remarkable members of the class of 2023. I am Dr. Doherty, the Director of Advanced Learning for Dewan School, and I'm your host for today's recognition ceremony. So, AP exams are in a couple of weeks, prior to next. I may bring it up today because this is a celebration. But seniors, you are ready. These teachers did not go easy on you. They know you can't get stronger by staying around in the weight room and watching someone else lift the weights. You've got to be the one doing the work to develop the strength. And you are so much stronger than I think you know. Because you should be doing the work under incredible circumstances. In the 24 years after the last global pandemic in 1918, we experienced a sharp curtailment of personal liberties known as prohibition. Bank failures of the Great Depression and World War II. After the most recent pandemic, just since you guys were sophomores, we've seen a curtailment of personal liberties, bank failures, and another life war of Europe. But remember, after World War II, America experienced robust economic growth. Remarkable scientific and technological innovation, including landing humans on the moon, an expansion of civil liberties and greater social justice. The greatest generation, as they're known, came up in the shadow of hardship after the last pandemic, and it's all out. Talk about waiting. Michael Danny, who is a member of that generation and is turning 100 this year, says tough times don't last, but tough people do. And now, you are that generation. We are even preparing to return to the moon. So, AP exams, you've got this and all that will come after. I've been monitoring the markers of your achievement, and I have been amazed at what you've been able to do. For example, in the first semester of this year, 88% of the grades earned by seniors in the class of 2023 were a B or higher. Pre-pandemic, our stretch goal was 86%. So, yeah. You, the class of 2023, have attended contests and competitions and exhibits and presentations in creative writing, literature, art, mathematics, science, and history. And you qualify for national and international recognitions in mathematics and science. You participated in community service, elevated in uh, discourse around social justice, and spoken at school board meetings, seniors, in your time and experience at Academy, if you participated in any of those opportunities, will you please stand up? That's fantastic. I would like to also call out our quest 
British finalists who have earned full ride scholarships to elite colleges and universities. Uh, Sue Strong, Kevin Wynn, and Dilaf Adams, if you're here, please stand up. It has been a long journey to get to this point, but it has gone by so quickly. And we did not do this alone. Parents, grandparents, guardians, mentors, and families, please stand up and be recognized for your support for our student graduates.
Roxana Barahona Alvarado. Caitlin Bartz. Zoe Blackburn. Matthew Bonner. Janelle Bryant. Adrian Bettner Cable. Ethan Button. Alexandria Christensen. John Charlson. Carter Christie. Addison Clark. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Garcia. Carla Gonzalez Olay. Abigail Pond. Zachary Heilman. Long Huang. Andrew Israel. Adrian Hilbert. That should have been Kisela. <laughs> Ian King. Hayden Vaughn.
Adriana Pham. Dan Pham. Daniela Pinto Mendoza. Sean Presswood. And I would like to introduce Lucy Ford to read the next name. Sophia Reed.
they conduct workshops to educate each other on far ranging issues. They have conducted fundraisers and organized panel discussions and given voice to help us improve the academy experience. Uh, the senior leader of CORE we recognize today is Elon Adams. Competition. The highest achieving students in the nation on the PSAT exam are named National Merit Scholars. Semi finalists for this award are in the top one half of one percent of all students in their state. Since 1985, every National Merit semi finalist in Des Moines has attended one or more classes at Central Academy. Semi finalists are invited to apply to be recognized as National Merit Scholar finalists. Winners of this designation have been judged to, be, to have the strongest combination of academic skills, achievement, and extracurricular accomplishments, and potential success with the most rigorous universities. We are waiting on the final announcement of our National Merit Final Scholarships winners, but these are the National Merit Semifinalists and Finalists. Please come forward, Sebastian Smollett, Meyer Owens, and Sarah Simon. Please come forward and be recognized. Mateo Angel, Sydney Anderson for Abby Hines, Sarah Vincent, and Peter. Dennis expected only the best of himself and others, and the student receiving the award this year 
possesses an inspiring and sometimes incomprehensible drive to succeed. She has faced personal challenges during her time in school that many of us could not imagine. And that's on top of the shared challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, the political and social unrest of the last few years. Anna Meyer Snyder said of her, I felt she had so much stacked against her, I don't think I would have been able to operate for one day, let alone enough days to earn those scores. But I really don't think she cared about the grade. She wouldn't fight or argue as to why she earned the score. She would ask, so if I did this instead, or if I would have done this, then that would demonstrate I know this? Our work earners' willingness to embrace new opportunities is deeply meaningful to me this year. For a while, I hoped to establish a college-level African-American studies course at Academy, and I was thrilled to be able to make that happen this year. Creating an entirely new course is an intimidating endeavor, and I was even more trepidatious, knowing that I was a white cis head man, and that I had a class of only six students. As it turns out, I had nothing to worry about. The small class has been a joy uh, to work with, and a huge part of that is because of the keen insights and meaningful contributions of this young person. No matter the topic, uh, she dug in with what Ms. Meyer Snyder described as perseverance, curiosity, and wanting to learn. I probably need to start reminding her about the various books I've wondered throughout the year, although she's welcome to keep them if she wants. And I can't even begin to tell you how impressed our guest speakers have been with her. During our culture unit, I brought in a challenging reading on the black philosophical tradition that I feared would be either too esoteric or just plain boring. She ignited the conversation with a series of questions and real-time aha moments, along with a genuine excitement to have discovered a new passion. Even when uh, Dr. Gogarty and Ms. Fox presented on Prep Academy, Central's need for anti-racist policies, she told me the next day it was amazing. An entire day of data in our humanities class is amazing. It is when you're an exceptional learner like this person. One of our recent class readings was from Bell Books, whose assessment of the need for revolutionary intersectional feminism led her to describe the power of a kind of love that leads us to better actions and interactions. With apology for the binary language indicative of the late 1980s, allow me to quote. That aspect that calls women, women to love womanness, that calls men to resist dehumanizing concepts of masculinity, is an essential part of our struggle. It's the process by which we move from seeing ourselves as objects to acting as subjects. When women and men understand that working to eradicate patriarchal domination is a struggle rooted in a longing to make a world where everyone can live fully and freely, then we know our work to be a gesture of love. Let us draw upon that love to heighten our awareness, deepen our compassion, intensify our courage and strengthen our commitments. We had a power com powerful conversation about what it means to have this kind of love as a force to counteract hate and prejudice around us. The third criterion for this award is compassion for others. If there was one thing I could label on and give to our society and the people running it, it would be a healthy dose of empathy. Our honoree, a young black woman, embodies multiple intersecting systems of oppression and owes nothing to anyone. Yet every day of her life is filled with concern for others, coupled with enormous grace for those of us who sometimes drift while sharing life's journey with her. She's not the traditional picture of what was once considered a model student. She speaks openly about the naughty child she used to be. She shares her vulnerability about the uncertainty of her future. In fact, the kids even mention the possibility of teaching. <laughs> she gets angry about things like injustice, sometimes even swears about it. In other words, she is fully and beautifully human. A remarkably brilliant, fiercely independent, proudly black young woman. The kind of person we need more of, all over Central Academy, the Moy, and the world. Whatever she does, the world is and will be a better place because of her. Please join me in congratulating the recipient of the 2023 Dennis Hilbert Award winner, Jay Dixon. <laughs> Select a small number of students from each of the six disciplines for special recognition in visual arts, English, mathematics, science, social science, and world languages. And from that tiny group of accomplished students, one of them earns the top recognition. We also will be recognizing the senior scholars, which our seniors selected. So first up, for visual arts, Ms. Fairhair. Congratulations. 
Congratulations on graduation. Hey, Connors. It's been an honor to get to know each and every one of you. Some of you started pottery back in 2020, the first year we opened our new studio, which also happened to be the year we were the only in-person class at the Academy. Yes, that's right. While everyone else was learning and teaching from home, we were cautiously and anxiously coming to learn in person in our new studio. To say it was a soft opening would be an understatement. To minimize contact, our student powers only came to class once a week, but class was six hours long, three hours in the morning, and three hours in the open studio in the afternoon. Each day of the week, a new group of potters would roll in, masked, and ready to throw. Those days in the studio were quiet. I'm not really sure if any of us knew what to say, or even how to act for that matter. The academy halls were silent, the parking lots were empty, and my personal favorite, the bathrooms were spotless all day. <laughs> <laughs> even with all that, some of the potters still started something that sort of, kind of, resembled relationships. There was one potter in particular who I seriously did not think said 10 words the entire year, but instead they made pots, a lot of pots. They created every moment of every day they were in the studio. Over the past three years, I have never seen this potter sit down and take a break in the studio. They are in the studio for every open studio, every free period, and now that I think of it, I don't think they've ever even missed a day of class. And they even started talking. They have gone, gone above and beyond from the very beginning, teaching themselves how to make lids as a beginner, trying out and being selected for the 450 throwing team, and most recently, he can be found in various riverbeds hunting for wild play. His pots demand respect with their sharp lines, crisp details, and architectural builds. He is kind, he is curious, he is an enthusiastic sharer of knowledge. The young potters fondly refer to him as the man with the mane, the guy with the glasses, or the long-haired potter dude. The rest of us like to call him Wesley. <laughs> Congratulations, Wesley, on being named this year's Distinguished Scholar uh, in Pottery.
first, the student should have taken English here at Central Academy for grades 8 through 12. Second, we look at the students who are identified for or selected to take our English action course senior year. And third, one of the most important aspects we look for when we're choosing a student to honor with this award is whether the student truly has a passion for literature and writing. The English Capstone course was developed last year to not only provide a radical acceleration for English students, but also provide an elective for seniors to take to not only get a 200 level DMAC literature course, but also a DMAC humanities course. I wish you could sit with us in our classroom to watch the culmination of the hard work and thought these students have put into being a scholar of not only English, but of all fields they have studied throughout the high school. These students are, quite frankly, impressive. Through them, I see how impressive my colleagues are. Trust me, the students are listening, and they are applying the things, they, the things they've learned from all their courses. Parents and guardians of the students, thank you for your support throughout the years. Thank you for choosing to join public schools. It was the right choice. In the course, I coach each with Ms. Brooks. Anytime we look at literature, film, or art, I also learn from the students about math, history, science, work language, art. From each discussion, I get to learn what they have learned from all of you. I wish I could call all the capstone names today because they deserve it. Their passion and joy and sense of community and creativity cause the classroom to grow. They are thoughtful, talented, and if you stop by at the end of the, of the period, fully committed to just dance session. I also want to recognize and celebrate all of you seniors who have stepped with us in English at Central Academy. That is something you should be very proud of. I Just raise your hands if you've done that, if you're a senior taking English at Central Academy. Great, but also both of our English capstone courses. They also are the editor of the of Outside the Box, Box, our school literary and arts This year, they especially stood out in their complex and thoughtful classroom presentations. They shared that they adore going above and beyond. And Alana Cummings does just that, go above and beyond. One of her former English teachers told me, I hope you use the word spark club when you describe her. Also, fearless. Alana, thank you for your daily joy, thoughtfulness, and creativity. You are a delight to be around, and we are excited to see you tackle your next step with all that experience. The other recipients of our English Award of Excellence for their school, Bailey Bacon, <laughs> Roxana Barahana Alvarez, <laughs> Campbell Hilton.
Uh, we use silly things like today, I think I counted 94 of you who have taught and 32 of you who I'm teaching this year, and it just, it's really, really neat to see you from 733 to, to this point. Uh, which brings us to choosing the math department award, which is always very bittersweet for our department. Uh, the passions and merits that the senior mathematical thinkers have are numerous. They inspire us as the faculty. Of course, I would quantify some of the biggest mathematical achievements of the group. Uh, 50 members of the senior class completed calculus while they were in high school. Seven members of this senior class in an honorable mention are hired on the high school mathematical contest and modeling, which you will hear more about in a moment. Four members of this senior class are in all academic team honors at the University of Wisconsin Bible Math Contest. Seven members of the senior class took our advanced math problem solving class and finished AP Calculus BC, which is a very hefty load of mathematics in high school. Two members of the senior class finished in the top 15 in the basketball data analytics battle, uh, which is about 10 hours spent developing an algorithm to break how teams would do in this year's March Madness men's Division one basketball tournament, uh, just based on statistics of the teams from the season. And yet we had to choose an award winner. It helped that this year's award winner was the only person to fall into each and every one of those categories that I just read off. Uh, that's Ryan Fertino. Ryan <laughs> also won first place this month at the University of South Dakota Math Contest in the Calculus Division. He's earned out all academic team recognition and class bills each year he's attended the contest and has taken our advanced math problem solving course not once, not twice, but three years in a row. Uh, more importantly, Ryan has a profound love of learning, diving into challenges and enthusiastically sharing his discoveries in ways that brighten our math classrooms. Uh, maybe the best way to convey that is by reading excerpts from a college recommendation of someone for Ryan. Um, his combination of curiosity, dedication, ability to research and learn independently, revelry and challenges, natural brilliance, awareness of others, compassion, leadership, and teaching make me nervous to write this letter. It seems so consequential to try to communicate just how special Ryan is as a person and as a learner. Um, and further, today, for the third class in a row, Ryan is teaching my class of advanced math problem solving members of our accomplished math team. I've taught very high achieving students for all 30 years of my career, but very rarely have I asked any of them to teach class. Ryan's pedagogical approach is comparable to a trained veteran teacher. Prior to the first lesson, he came to me with genuine angst. I'm not sure how to, how adept the students will be at thinking like programmers. So in order to teach them about agent-based modeling, I prepared two approaches. One that leverages a good deal of programming, and one that engages their logical thinking more than specific programming abilities. Is that all right? <laughs> I sure glad this was perfect. <laughs> Once the first lesson began, it was a beautiful sight to see Ryan adapting his lesson in real time as he received feedback from the students. Further in the narrative of how uniquely special Ryan is would be how he came to learn about this topic. Age-based model. Ryan was the youngest member of the class in 10th grade. He fell in love with the research and the ability to code, communicate, use math, and try to solve very significant real problems inherent in the math, math, the math modeling contest in which we participate. He taught himself advanced coding in order to take his abilities further in the future. By the next year, 11th grade, Ryan led his team of four students to the top 10 in the world and top two in this country on a high school mathematical contest and modeling. I have to say pause for the right of that. <laughs> and the top eight in the country on the United States region of the International Mathematical Contest in modeling. His modeling abilities were so great that his team earned the highest recognition of any of the Central Academy teams since we began in 2006. Nearly 100 teams saw with great mathematicians who went on to incredible careers and interesting college experiences. Ryan's genius, his programming, his ability to create cohesive collaboration and his enthusiasm drove his team to these astounding results. To be clear, Ryan's team was the only team in the country that finished in the top 10 of both of these contests. 
Nothing in my career has revealed as much about my students' abilities to contribute to society and the college campuses, as well as math modeling contests have. Students research, they collaborate productively with others under the deadline. They know that much is uncertain. They learn how to use math tools to provide resolution. They analyze the model's strengths and weaknesses and persuade a reader or judge why their model should be chosen to solve the real problem, like how to allocate water downstream from Lake Mead. Brian Trujillo is the best math modeler I have ever taught. He exalts in stretching his abilities to their limits and learning new things. It's truly a pleasure for us to present this year's math department award to Ryan Trujillo. Questions and empathize with others. 
Finally, grit and determination. Our work is internally driven to succeed. They are in constant competition with themselves, not others. How can I be better? How can I learn from this? They do not measure their success in the classroom or on the track relative to others. They are constantly trying to strive to be the best they can be in the classroom, on the course of track, and in life. They enjoy the journey and they enjoy the opportunity to compete, grow, and learn. Personal growth is their success. I hope Boston University knows and appreciates the person, the student, the scientist, and the athlete that they will be receiving from the fall. And hopefully they will provide you with many opportunities to grow as a scientist, as a person, and as an athlete. Continue to learn, to grow, and to challenge yourself. This year's Science Outstanding Awardee is Adrian Bender Cable. I'm going to change it up a little bit, because uh, I always have to be different. Um, okay, so uh, instead of doing the Department of Work winner first, I'm going to do the uh, honor reads that we are recommended to meet to the five high schools, just to build the drama a little bit, because I'm all about the drama. Okay, so uh, our honoree uh, uh, from Nick High School is Amanda Cloud. High School, David Klinger. Uh, Luger High School, Ella Minor. From Van Meter High School, Mateo Montel. Canada won the attention is during the pandemic when we 
for teaching online. And it was a stressful situation, of course, for parents, students, teachers, everyone involved. Uh, Canada really appreciated that this student A turned her camera on, which is more than some students, a lot of students were going to do at that time. Uh, B was always very positive, very happy, or uh, very happy to be in class. Uh, and C, when Canada herself got COVID, this student, even though they didn't know each other terribly well and had only known each other through the medium of Microsoft Teams, this student sent Canada balloons and chocolates to wish her a speedy recovery. Uh, Canada uh, has also had this student for multiple classes, AP, what, can I think of, let's see, but AP Research, AP Seminar, History of the Middle East and Islam, History of Latin America, uh, has mentioned that she's always encouraging other brother students, helpful, compassionate, and kind, superb thing with great emotional intelligence. These are things Canada said just in one email. So you can see why I'm kind of relying on her to do a lot of the talking here. Uh, so uh, I also have had the honor to work with this student first uh, freshman year in uh, Accelerated AP Human Geography, artist formerly known as World History Deep One Places. And then again this year in AP World History, and it's been a blast. I, I was so thrilled when I found out that she was going to be in the class. Uh, not least because it meant another uh, endless supply of skills from her grandmother. That is right. I swear this is not why she's getting the award, but uh, <laughs> freshman year, her grandma asked what could she do to thank me for, you know, teaching this student, and I said, well, I like Skittles. <laughs> so, periodically, ever since then, I get Skittles in my mailbox, or directly from this student. Um, so anyway, uh, so there's this uh, saying that's kind of become a cliche, sad to say, uh, a tribute to Mohamed Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. This student is the change she wants to see in the world and will continue to be the change in the future. And I am so honored and thrilled that I've had a chance to teach her and uh, I can't wait to see what she does in the future. So our distinguished stellar award for the Social Science Department is Sarah Grace Lund. I think I'm going to follow Mr. Rochelle and do the departmental honors for the homeschooled first. Dr. Gorey will assist. Uh, we'll start with those who are Italian. So each language can or may select students from each homeschool. In Italian, from Roosevelt for Corey Baker and from Clark Cooper Reese. Thank you. 
Roosevelt with Maya Earth. classes virtually, asynchronously, in-person, independent study, whole class, and smaller group. They have experienced all styles of learning of language through their four years to make it to level 4 AP. Nothing stops their passion and curiosity. Despite a virtual independent study semester, this student thrives and consistently and constantly goes beyond expectation. In the classroom, this student is a great collaborator and appear to classmates. Gentle with helpful hints, pronunciation corrections, guiding questions, this student shows grace and support to others without intimidating them with their content knowledge. Reliable, dependable, and constantly pushing to exceed targets, this student keeps me on my toes. Even the indicators, such as national French contests, show that this student has promise and performs well. Last year, they ranked in the top three for their level in the state, and they earned a silver medal nationally, which represents 94th through 88th percentile. This is um, also a student who is expected to earn the seal of biliteracy via our stamp testing. This is an internationally uh, a recognized assessment in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Students who achieve intermediate mid five or higher on each of those four sub-skills receive this recognition at graduation on their transcript and on their diploma. Beyond the Walls Essential Academy, this student attends related cultural events around the metro with their family and is committed to traveling to a francophone country to practice their skills and immerse themselves in the language and culture. I am proud and honored to recognize Hannah Seifen. Understatement. 
but simultaneously being brilliant. He is positive, good natured, unflustered, and inclusive. Ryan is highly self reliant and competent. He has excelled because he's had the tenacity and foresight to be flexible and creative, to achieve his goals and take care of his academic responsibilities. He's a leader in the classroom. He is academically gifted, and he is extremely emotionally intelligent. He connects with people. He is confident. He is poised. He is a problem solver. He has a great sense of humor, and he has an ease about him that makes others feel at ease too. He is the type of person that others want to emulate, and he should be very proud of himself as he receives the award for the Central Academy Senior Scholar. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. Seniors, you voted and selected one member of your class to give the senior address. Out of all the amazing voices you, we have here today, you selected a deep thinker and a kind heart. It is my great pleasure to introduce Cameron Wheeler. Be curious, revel in small success, and most of all, 
simply appreciate where you are. Nowhere else could I make friends with people from all five of the public schools. Nowhere else could I get to know kids from out of the district. And nowhere else could I learn German. Central Academy is special. And while I believe it's meant something different to all of us, it has still meant something. And whether you've taken two classes here or 20, the respect the teachers have shown, the learning environment created, and memories made here will always stick with you. And while I'm dreading opening the letter I wrote myself in 8th grade English, and while I'm still looking for the third wall of a Mr. Jacobson class, I'm excited to see how much has changed and what's felt like the longest short four years of my life. I've been lucky to have to come here, lucky to know all of you, and even luckier to represent one of the most stellar graduating classes ever. To quote the famous philosopher Ferris Dewar, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you can miss it. Take this moment to appreciate what you've done, the hard work, the creativity, and the friendships we have built. While there's still a lot of looking ahead to be done and a lot of life left to be lived, I'm beyond grateful for the time I've spent here and the people I've met. Thank you. On behalf of the Central Academy Alumni Network, we'd like to welcome the class of 2023 to their own ranks. If you're interested in joining or signing up to be part of their programs, you go to centralacademyalumninetwork.org backslash connect to sign up to be part of the Central Academy Alumni Network. In fact, they supplied the pay for today's senior recognition. So I want to say thank you so much for joining us today to celebrate the hard work and dedication of our seniors. Congratulations, seniors. The reception that follows this program is directly below this room, one floor down. There's an elevator here where you can take the stairs on either side. We have uh, backdrops for photos, cake, punch, cookies, and fellowship. So please come down and mingle Get pictures with your favorite staff members and your favorite friends, and feel free to mingle. Thank you all so much for attending today.